Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Christmas Unwrapped. It's great to see everyone joining, and it seems like we've got quite a few people who have already joined the call, so I think we can start off. Uh, so my name is Helen, just as an introduction, I'll be your moderator for today's session. Before I do start, I'd like to go through a few items just so you know how to participate in today's webinar. We do encourage participation, um, so any questions can be sent through the panel that's on your screen. The webinar does go for about 40 minutes as well. Again, feel free to um, submit any questions in the panel um, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation if we do have time. If not, we'll definitely follow up with all your, with all your answers, so feel free to ask as many questions as you please. All right, so I'll take you through today's agenda. And the agenda for today is that we will be reviewing the Golden Quarter. That does include Black Friday, Cyber Week, and the Christmas retail period. We'll look at what's happened online in retail over that period, including retail foot traffic, industry visits, and how brands have performed during key sales events, and especially what you can take away from that. Before I introduce our speakers, just a little overview of HitWise to those who are new to HitWise. Our data and insights can help marketers, agencies and publishers understand consumers behind their online behaviours. You can see on your screen right now, uh, we do have a multitude of abilities that HitWise can help you with. That's measuring performance, discovering behaviours and pinpointing new segments. Optimising your activities and tracking your campaign performances. If you do have any questions about how we can help you, just drop us a note and we'll get, we'll get back to you with any answers. Now to introduce our presenters for today. Joining us, we have our very own Craig Heaven and our special guest from Power Retail, Grant Arnott. Hey guys, how are you both going? Yeah, very good, thanks Helen. Good morning everyone, happy to be here. Good morning, thanks Helen. <laughs> so I'll just intro you both. Craig heads up our Australian business and has been with Hitwise for 10 plus years. He's, working, he's been working across multiple markets from the UK, Asia and Australia. He has helped businesses across many different verticals from retail, auto, finance and travel to ensure that they understand the market context that Hitwise provides. As a recent father, he'll no doubt throw some bad jokes in today, so just be mindful. And also a big thank you to Grant Arnott for joining us today. Grant is a highly respected veteran of the business, business media and e-commerce. He is an accomplished entrepreneur whose initiatives include power, publishing Power Retail and the e-commerce leaders playbook and launching Australia's first national online mega sale, which we all know to be Click Frenzy. So Grant, um, thank you for joining us today. You are regularly sought after, um, so we're very glad to have you on board collaborating with us. Oh, thanks, Helen. Wow. I hope I can move up to that slide. Yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right, I'll pass it over to you, Craig, to start off with the presentation. Fantastic. Thanks, Helen. And hello to everyone. Um, so the structure today, we'll start broad. We'll look at the overall uh, industry. Then we'll drill into you know, who was successful at a divisional level and at a uh, brand level and narrow in on the specific days of Quick Frenzy, Black Friday and Boxing Day, and a little uh, piece on um, you know, Amazon towards the end. So let's get into it. So section one will dissect the retail industry. So some of the top level uh, takeaways that we've seen are that you know, the key events in November, all boosted sales. So all three of those uh, event days really did you know, drive a significant volume of traffic. We're seeing Amazon continue to, to grow at pace. And uh, finally, as you'd expect, Boxing Day is still holding strong as that main shopping event of the Christmas period. Uh, so holding strong, unlike our cricket team, who didn't hold that strong on Boxing Day, uh, their grant, unfortunately. Yes, uh, let's not mention the cricket this year. <laughs> so looking at the, uh, the, the Consolidation of the three shopping days in Click Frenzy, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday, they all did contribute and boost uh, the retail sales uh, overall with a 2.8% increase year on year for November. Um, although of note is that the year on year and month on month increase was smaller this year compared to the 2016 2017 growth uh, period. 
when we start to, to drill into uh, looking at this in a bit more detail, um, what we can see here is we're comparing the overall online retail um, trade as a share of the retail turnover. Now, the overall online retail turnover increased 6.6% in Australia uh, for November, uh, building year on year, whilst in-store traffic was down. Um, so looking at the foot traffic, uh, as reported here by Shopper Track, uh, we've seen store foot traffic was down 4.7% year on year. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it, Craig? Like, um, it really proves what's a much talked about topic at the moment. A, that the um, the dynamics of retail and this golden quarter are shifting further forward into, into November. So um, it really is disrupting that traditional Christmas retail period, not only online where it's moving sales forward, but, but clearly coming at the expense of uh, foot traffic, which is that, that overall online experience continuing to improve more shoppers in Australia embracing online shopping and particularly around these um, big events through November, which really focus the energy on online more so than offline. So we're seeing that in the data here. Yeah, definitely. So what we've done now is we've compared sort of the retail turnover to our Hitwise total visit data and we saw in November 28 uh, 2018, uh, we have lower growth in both traffic and turnover on both a year-on-year and month-on-month -month basis. However, traffic growth uh, rebounded in December 2018. So we'll, you know, update you guys via our blog to see if that um, contributes in terms of sort of the the sales figures once the ABS releases those. But a really big kick there for uh, for visits in that December period greatly influenced by Boxing Day, which we'll drill into in a bit, bit more detail soon. Okay, so breaking down the, the overall traffic uh, in by industry, we see several key takeaways here. So standout is the department store growth. Now this includes the influence of Amazon, but it also includes the unexpected growth from the decline in the toys category and babies category with Toys R Us and Babies R Us going out of business. So some of the analysis by my team identified this is a major gap um, for such an established brand So and was soaked up by uh, additional um, department stores like the Target, Kmart, Big W as well. So that was a bit of a boost for department stores, but unfortunate um, for, for the toys and, uh, and babies industry. Yeah, look, it certainly had a had a significant impact, hasn't it? You can see that right away where Toys R Us, Babies R Us coming out of the market has witnessed declines in those categories. Um, but, you know, department stores significantly up even, even beyond that. So uh, that suggests either that they're, they're getting their act together more online or more classifications around department stores, definitely absorbing some of the, uh, the traffic from other categories as well. Yeah. For sure, and, and I think sort of another sort of little takeaway here is the grocery and alcohol category up 15% uh, uh, year on year. Uh, and we did see that sort of um, within the alcohol industry, gin performed very well, up 64% year on year within one of the major retailers over the festive season. Very trendy drink at the moment, and the gin everyone's getting onto it, so um, yeah, it reflects in the online figures as well. Definitely, and probably into you know not just the the, the, the Christmas day, but Boxing Day might have a, have a few gins uh, left over there as well. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's then drill into the actual um, sites and, and brands here. So for quarter four 2018, year on year, Amazon was actually up 88 percent, um, sort of due to their uh, successful Black Friday push. Uh, as a percentage of the shopping and classified industry, we're seeing Amazon.com.au at around 1.62%. Uh, in contrast to Amazon in the UK, they have an overall sort of 25% share of the online retail space and the US around 18.28%. So some way to go for the US and UK. Um, eBay slightly down, but still dominant in the Australian um, online shopping landscape with 9.25% uh, visit share. Um, also call outs for, for Catch, Woolies, Big W and Maya, all up 20% year on year. So it's great growth for, for, for these brands in this key sales period. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, with the arrival of, of Amazon.com, that eBay hadn't suffered too much at, at this point, uh, but definitely a noticeable drop and certainly 
you'd have to attribute that to uh, the new Amazon website taking you off, off the eBay side as well. Okay. So charting out the, the overall sort of traffic uh, over the, the specific uh, weeks here, we can really start to see the event days influence. Um, Boxing Day stands tall as the key attraction uh, for most visitors to the retail industry. Um, Quick Frenzy is actually the starter's gun, kicking off the, the festive season sale period. Uh, Black Friday taking the baton along with Cyber Monday, but all generating 37 million plus visits uh, each day with Boxing Day, you know, totaling that sort of 58 million visits on that day. Yes, yeah, an impressive spike. Um, do you have an indication with that Black Friday spike, how much of that is down to Amazon? I know they went really hard on Black Friday this year compared to year on year. Yeah, yeah, we do. We'll cover that in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, I don't want to give away the, the um, some of the, the, the thunder in, in sure, some of the other slides, um, but uh, it's, it's definitely a significant spike there. They, I think they had about a 180% increase on, on Black Friday. Uh, and we'll drill into some of the specific products and searches within that, that day as well. Okay, so let's look at the um, the, the overall sort of event sales base uh, over the past couple of years. So in, in this skyscraper, we can easily see, compare the dominance of each of the sales day year on year. So day one for Click Frenzy was actually down, uh, but day two was up and growth in Black Friday and Boxing Day. So, so at Grant, can you put the um, the day one flip uh, for for Click Frenzy on on the outage? Yeah, yeah look, um, unfortunately we had some some technical difficulties at the the peak time start of the event that definitely impacted our overall numbers. But yeah, we recovered strongly and, and fair to say it won't won't happen again. So, uh, and yeah, interesting growth in day two and then beyond that as well and the other uh, events coming up. And, and, and seeing the Black Friday and Boxing Day both growing 7.5% for so some similar consistency there in terms of sort of that, that growth over those those two event days. Yeah, and I think the growth in Boxing Day, you know, you think Black Friday, sure, it's got room to grow, it's newer, but, but the growth in Boxing Day is significant. You know, that really points to um, the embracing of online shopping over finding your way into a shopping centre on, on Boxing Day and uh, really, really points to the fact that, you know, Boxing Day is going to become more and more about online, less about elbowing um, everyone else in Australia out of the way or to try and get through the doors early in the morning. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that trend shapes up and how retailers adapt to, you know, I guess a, a, the new retail style shopping and research around Boxing Day. I know you've got some interesting slides around Christmas research coming up. Definitely, definitely. When people are starting to, to, to search for that Boxing Day uh, deal. So uh, we'll cover that in a little bit. Okay, so this takes us on to uh, section two, where we can start to understand sort of how brands are performing uh, across these key sales events. So, you know, some of the key uh, takeaways here, Quick Frenzy was definitely a success for Australian retailers. Um, Black Friday uh, was actually Amazon's most successful day of the year. Uh, Boxing Day continues that tradition as uh, most successful day, but for bricks and mortar um, retailers. And uh, interesting to see the research beginning after that Christmas lunch. Uh, which is uh, good to see. So here we've taken the top 30 retailers across each of the uh, the days and compared to the same day of the previous week as a reference point. So for the top 30 brands, um, Quick Frenzy drove more traffic than, than Black Friday. Um, both event days had a massive increase, but uh, according to the Hitwise data, we saw Quick Frenzy on the Tuesday increase by around sort of 36,000 more um, sort of uh, visits here than uh, Black Friday um, for the retailers that, that we'll explore in the next slide. So what's interesting here is the performance of brands on the specific sales day. So for larger retailers, we see Black Friday was more successful, um, but for some of the next tier, Click Frenzy was actually a better event um, and a better sales day, getting a bit of cut through there. Yeah, that's certainly what we what we aim for um, is to you know, air <clears throat> all, all retailers and with the centralised platform that we have, it really is all about 
you know, driving high energy through to those participating retail brands and making it a really efficient and effective and enjoyable experience for consumers. Uh, but, you know, again, there's more and more putting uh, extra effort into Black Friday and, as you said, some of the, some of the bigger brands there, Maya, Catch Stop and Catch, um, certainly leveraging Black Friday in a big way as well as the, the Click Friendly event. But I think overall we're just seeing that concentration of retail energy, as I said, shifting back into the month of November in a, a really compelling way that, that really all retailers need to address and strategize for uh, down the track now on planning for, for next year because um, the genie's out of the bottle, it seems, and, and that, that movement back towards November is something that you can't pretend is, is just a, a passing fad or, or, or insignificant. It's actually, as this is showing, hugely significant and, and bound destined to become on the current trajectory more significant than the actual month of December, the way it's looking. De definitely. And, and you look at sort of all three days, you're getting solid growth uh, across for a lot of these brands. So you really need to divide that strategy across each of the sales events. That yeah, way. look, it's when, it's when all these shoppers are shopping now, so you have to be in amongst it and you have to have a good, solid strategy for new customer acquisition and for retention and, and for, um, you know, doing fantastic deals. That's what people are going to expect. So, yeah, times are changing. Yeah. For sure, and I think sort of prioritise each of the, the key audiences and the products across each of the days. We see a slightly different, um, you know, preference for uh, for for customers looking on what is Quick Frenzy, Black Friday to, to to Boxing Day. So, you know, really drilling in, understanding, you know, what is that that, that your audiences are, are wanting to see on those particular days, promoting those, getting the right pricing um, uh, for for those uh, those products is crucial to to that strategy. Yeah. And also that opportunity to do more than just sales items as well, but really think about you know, all the, the customer promotions you can do. And, and the most important thing is now your customer service as well, because you're getting a great shot at you know, the, um, the concentration of Australia's shopping community getting involved all at the one time, the online shopping community, and you don't want to blow it by giving them a poor customer experience. That's it, for sure. So be ready. Yeah, there's no excuses, I guess, is where I want to hit um, for not getting caught out by surprise by the, the spikes in, in November. It's there. It's been there for a few years now, and retailers need to be ready um, and resourced accordingly, just as they would be for their Boxing Day events and for the two weeks ahead of Christmas. Um, they really need to focus on this November one because that's now the customer's expectations. So as, as we drill into sort of Black Friday, what we can see here is you know, Amazon pushes Black Friday hard. Uh, and so for Amazon.com.au, we saw you know, an increase of around 186% um, uh, compared to sort of the, the, the previous uh, Friday. Um, still a long way to go to catch eBay, who grew 36% on their market leading position versus that previous Friday. But EB Games, Kogan, Good Guys, Maya, Catch, all close to doubling that traffic, taking advantage of, of this crucial sales day uh, as well. So, you know, interesting to see the types of brands that, that, that are that are resonating with uh, with customers uh, on Black Friday um, here as well. So, drilling down into what people were viewing within Amazon, uh, here we're able to sort of look at the overall page views uh, and. I'll you know, categorize those by the, the specific industries. Uh, so we see the typical um, players, the electronics category, the computers category, always a, a key uh, vertical for uh, you know Black Friday. Um, but what's also interesting is to is to think about sort of Amazon pushing their own products as well. So mm -hmm. as a man manufacturer, you know they manufacture Alexa, Kindle products. Uh, we can see the influence of uh, Amazon Home and e-readers doing very well. So. Uh, the Amazon sort of home products in, in our US data was up 500% um, for uh, for Black Friday, so uh, which is huge. Um, we also see sort of the top products that, that were being sort of uh, purchased. So very gaming focused. Red Dead Redemption 2. But that's hard to say. Um, Spider Man and uh, the old favourite Mario Kart coming in uh, number three there. Um, and just a little fun fact from uh, from the US data. Uh, one of the key products that was up, you know, significantly uh, for Black Friday in the US was the DNA testing, testing kits. So from 23andMe and Ancestry, 
So interesting to see if that's a gift or maybe you know their post their Thanksgiving uh, family yeah, could be. Uh, type piece there. So watch this space. We're interested to see if that's on our list next year. So as we get into understanding a bit more detail here, what we've uh, done is been able to be, give, use our unique capabilities to drill into what customers are searching within Amazon eBay and, uh, and JB Hi-Fi. And again, we've seen that slight difference on Black Friday based on, on the different sort of retailers. So gaming consoles, personal technology products were big within Amazon and JB. A broader selection of products within eBay, so the likes of the likes of Dyson, um, very popular uh, on, on Black Friday as well. And it's interesting to look at this um, JB Hi-Fi, you expect to be, so it's very electrical focused or electronics focused. JB Hi-Fi, that's a given that's their, um, their offering, but considering eBay and Amazon pride themselves on being a, a broader range marketplace, they're still most definitely the go-to for electronics over any other brand. It's interesting not to see any of the apparel brands like when, when, for example, I didn't do it for this webinar, but if we were to compare this with ClickFrenzy, you'd see people looking for um, brands like Nike and Adidas and so, well, um, some of your other apparel brands, as well as electrical, this seems to be exclusively focused on uh, electrical, which doesn't bode well for those in the electrical category. Amazon's really going to take this on as well. Uh, if you don't have your own own branded products, it's definitely going to start challenging eventually if um, the perception amongst the ele electronics customers is that Amazon and eBay are the go-to places versus um, the, the others in JB Hi-Fi and Harvey Norman, so um, could be dangerous times ahead. Indeed, but what's interesting is when we start to, to, to look at sort of the search intent uh, as well, I, I really love this side, slide because it gives us the, the ability to look at sort of the search traffic and see how it's a key indicator of, the, of that shopper intent and how Australians have taken to, to Black Friday. So, Looking here, we can see brands that have that greatest affiliation in the, in the shopper's mind. Um, so we're looking at sort of all variations of Black Friday. And uh, actually, JB Hi-Fi is right up there uh, in, in the association um, of, uh, of Black Friday and the way that people are searching um, here. Also, the likes of Amazon, Maya, Good Guys, Harvey Norman, EV Games, Kogan. So they've all got that awareness of this sales event out there and uh, taking that website search share of all variations of Black Friday. Um, we can also see that many are reinforcing this with their with their PPC strategy there. So using their AdWords to um, to really sort of drive significant um, volumes and, and uh, tailor their their messaging uh, accordingly. Uh, but uh, what's also you know really interesting about this data is that you see so many of the the opportunities for publishers to start to do the hard yards and um, you know look to produce that content uh, for shoppers who are ranking those sales. So. Retailers and manufacturers should take advantage of this, you know, share these deals early with publishers, partner through native content opportunities, and you know, make sure they have that strategy in place to do it prior. Um, so you, you we see sort of that you know, Aussies are organized in their approach to, to, to get a bargain. So uh, really key to see the likes of you know find and use um, and the life hacker all getting good share of, of Black Friday related search traffic. And, and I look at this, I like this slide as well, and, and I think it represents a huge challenge, but also an opportunity. The challenge is, uh, as Black Friday grows, as um, media becomes more and more expensive, it's going to become cost prohibitive for uh, the smaller retailers that aren't on that list. You look at the, the gorillas there, and there's um, you know, Big W and Kogan and Meyer and uh, Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi all with uh, massive, you know, millions and millions of dollars to spend on, on marketing uh, versus, you know, your mi middle tier retailers are going to struggle to get any share of voice on Black Friday as it, as it continues to grow. But the opportunities are, you know, with those publishers that, that you talked about there, if you can, as you say, get in early, um, get some uh, great deals going and, and, and send them out so they have something to publish uh, that they can uh, alert their customers about, then that's going to be a good way to perhaps get some cut through uh, at a less expensive rate because the marketing costs of doing Black Friday now are just going to go through the roof this year.
definitely. And even just seeing to the likes of Wikipedia coming up there, people starting to people, you know, what is Black Friday? Yeah. Yes, there's still that type of uh, of uh, education uh, for, for the industry. But uh, yeah, if it's a good deal, I don't think people care too much about the, the history of it. Uh, and, and Amazon, I mean, up the top there, they, they are the kings of Black Friday. They've been doing it in the US um, incredibly well with Cyber Monday for uh, so many years now. So it makes sense that they're going to, to dominate in the Australian market. So, and uh, yeah, again, the better it is for Amazon at the expense of local retailers, uh, it is going to be difficult to get that share of voice against that. So we may see other promotions are popping up in November too, alongside Black Friday. Um, as well, you know, we start to see see a few emerging. And, and what's interesting when we're looking at the UK data is that October became a really key key time as well. Yeah. So, you know, people are going earlier; they're all trying to beat each other to, yeah. to, to get so their deal, deal deals out. Forward. And it came out that sort of October had the biggest growth year on year uh, in 2018 for yeah. uh, for the UK market. In three years when we're doing this, we might be talking about October as the, the big month. But at the moment, it's all, all things point towards that November month being the critical one for retailers, and you can't pretend it's it's not as big as December or not as important as December when all the data shows that it's potentially bigger already. Yeah, definitely. So let's look at sort of uh, December. Let's look at sort of good old Boxing Day. So what we can see here is that um, you know it was a real it's a shift in terms of sort of the previous two two sales event days. So. Boxing Day, we're seeing the traditional retailers um, seeing the most, the massive growth here. So, JB Hi-Fi, Harvey Norman, Maya, the good guys, Super Cheap Auto, DJs dominating um, with you know significant um, sort of growth compared to the previous week, and um, you know Finder doing a well again sort of as that as that primary source uh, of, of deals. So. This is another great one that we love um, at Hitwise where we can drill down into hourly data. So what we've done is take the top five retailers from the uh, from the previous slide and, and charted them day by day. So uh, love love the fact that sort of you know post Christmas here in red uh, on the 25th, we can see after lunch um, and through the night, everyone's starting to research um, their, their Boxing Day traffic. So they're planning the hunt. Uh, once allowed to leave the Christmas lunch table um, uh, instead of the race to the couch for a nap, uh, which what we do in our family, it's uh, it's more about sort of uh, getting on on the on the old uh, smartphone and being able to sort of look at where where they can get the best deal. So um, yeah, interesting to see Boxing Day really that spike kicks up at 6 a.m. Uh, then another kick at 9 a.m. and sort of fall way around that sort of that 10 a.m. piece. So. Uh, maybe people can't realise and they can't get a car park or don't want to face uh, uh, the Yeah, that's business. right. <laughs> They're already sitting in the queues. But yeah, I, I found this this graph from Hitwise really really fascinating and uh, considering what I was doing on Christmas Day after lunch, which was just hanging out in the pool and drinking more beer. So but a lot of people apparently were um, getting stuck into the, into the research and yeah, it really helps um, or you, you've really got to consider this data when you're looking at when you want to send your um, promotional Boxing Day messages. By Boxing Day, it appears to be too late. You want to be getting them uh, 11, 12 p.m. On, on Christmas Day uh, when they're just about to begin their research, as, as this graph shows. Any, any later than that, you might get pushed to the bottom as well. So if you want to be top of mind, I think that would be a good time to consider uh, your marketing activities. So when we go down to that next level and, and start to analyze online purchases, um, here for, we see sort of you know, really solid conversion rates for, for Meyer and JB, you know, over 1% conversion uh, on the this key sales day uh, for them. Uh, interestingly, when we dissect sort of the, the people buying uh, on Meyer, we can see that the converting audience has you know, quite a solid multi-channel approach that's resonating with customers. Um, search is still responsible for over um, 50% or you know, 40, 43% uh, percent there uh, of converting traffic, but we're seeing social, email, customers comparing price on competitors and also leveraging you know, the, the reward sites as well. Yeah. So drilling into um, people uh, who are purchasing on, on Amazon. So what we can see here in the bar chart is that uh, we're seeing actually more traffic to Amazon.com uh, than, uh, than .com.au on the left. 
but we're actually seeing a higher proportion of people converting on uh, and purchasing uh, on amazon.com.au. So you know, to recap, it's been a bit of an interesting year for, for Amazon and sort of you know, diluting the traffic between .com and .com.au based on the, the, the decisions around sort of the change in GST laws, which we can see they're highlighted in the blue chart. But uh, it's actually you know, seen that potentially they've conditioned um, Aussies to buy on, on Amazon.com.au with, the, with that greater uh, number of unique you know, users who are purchasing on .com.au. So within this slide, we're able to actually understand sort of those, that proportion of, of um, segment of audience that are actually purchasing on uh, Amazon. So, uh, you know, taking that um, that that segment as a uh, as an individual view, we're able to see through the cross shopping analysis um, across the different um, brands here within the, the bar chart. So. Um, definitely visiting a lot of other sites um, and doing their, their research uh, and um, the likes of sort of, you know, some of the, the key brands that we saw, but interesting to see that even the likes of Bunnings, Officeworks mm -hmm. in, in that consideration set, uh, as well as the um, you know, review sites. Um, so, you know, I know from personal experiences, you know, a lot of the products within Amazon that haven't built up that review type culture that, yeah. that, that they rely on. Um, people have found it to really sort of consider that with, with product review here uh, coming through with 33% of purchases, you know, visiting product review as well. Uh, we've also integrated some of our um, attitudinal um, data. So, you know, using our survey data that we integrate within um, Hitwise, we can start to see what are some of the motivators uh, for, for these Amazon purchases. So, you know, the likes of free shipping, good reviews, a one-stop shop, all very much over-indexed versus the online population uh, here. And as we sort of continue on using that, that Hitwise, Hitwise service survey data, uh, we're able to sort of answer some of the why questions that the, the behavioral data asks. So uh, again, sort of these, these purchases on uh, Amazon, they're more likely to be early adopters, they like to try new products, they like to influence other people by making recommendations. Um, so all over index versus the online population. So it's actually a key audience uh, mm. for, for Amazon to nurture. Um, they definitely don't want to disappoint um, these customers. And you know, it'd be even you know going down to the next level and, and looking at that versus uh, prime customers, where shipping is obviously a key piece. Um, it could be quite interesting to see sort of uh, how they how they fare. Uh, and uh, again, just referencing the UK, what we saw there was Prime subscriptions uh, for Amazon had their highest peak the week before Christmas. Right. Uh, so again, you know, we're talking about sort of the, the organised shopper, the, the the power of you know where the volume is in November, but there is that late shopper strategy that um, you know Prime is, is positioned well to be able to sort of uh, help with. Um, but it, it gives gives a, a good indicator that you know all brands need to think about that late shopper strategy um, in that last week, just prior before um, shipping um, has the impact. Usually two to three days before Christmas. Yep, absolutely. And people expect it now. I think consumers more and more expect that you can deliver quickly right up until Christmas. Definitely. So uh, this is some data that Power Retail uh, sort this year for our Spotlight series. So this is a report we did from a report that we did on Amazon Australia after 12 months. And so we surveyed uh, over 1,600 consumers as well as our retail database as well. And some of the findings were quite interesting. There's a bigger report available on it on our website. But just thought I'd give you a few of the highlights today. So uh, how is Amazon faring after, after year one? Uh, we can see from the graph there, um, certainly everyone's heard of Amazon, and 48% uh, have visited Amazon, but have never purchased from it. And only 25%, sorry, have, have purchased some things from Amazon, 31% in total, and uh, only 6% have gone on to become regular Amazon AU shoppers. So it's grown a lot, and we hear a lot of growth figures for Amazon, but still a long way to go to start really penetrating the Australian market at this point. Certainly not the, uh, the overwhelming 
impact that uh, many thought that was going to have in their first year. Uh, just some demographics that we're finding from our survey on Amazon AU shoppers. So interestingly, they're predominantly male shoppers. So 57% uh, of the average online shoppers are female, whereas 55% of the average Amazon AU shopper is, is male. And we also see that Amazon AU shoppers spend more online than average online shoppers, with 42% spending more than $250 a month online, versus 30 to 60. 36% of average online shoppers. So those Amazon shoppers are the more savvy, more frequent um, online shopping addicts, basically. And, and you reinforce is what we just saw around through those, those sort of gaming consoles, those higher volume, higher or higher valued products. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. the average order value because of that is likely to be higher as well, which would play into this. Yeah. And this was where we surveyed our retailers on what they predicted the Amazon Australia market share will be in 12 months' time. So most retailers, so 61% in total, predicted that Amazon would own less than 10% of market share this time next year. And also, interestingly, 57% of retailers surveyed say that uh, the arrival of Amazon Australia so far in year one has delivered no significant change on overall market competition. But I think uh, it would be seriously crazy to think that it's not going to continue to grow. Um, it already is having uh, some significant growth in one Amazon, as we know, that global juggernaut that's just going to continue to, to roll on. But rather than a, a charge, it seems like more of a march at, at the moment, but certainly watch this space um, with what they do over the next year. Uh, with Prime Day happening in the middle of the year, they really own that day. And they're obviously very invested in, in Black Friday and will continue to compete very hard against local retailers during that time. Definitely. Thanks, Grant. Uh, so let's you know jump into some of the key takeaways. Um, so that's that's all the, the the content that we have. But um, just to summarise, you know we can see that sort of the, the online sales events, Click, Click Frenzy, Black Friday, and Boxing Day all had a you know significant in, impact on the sales. Um, Boxing Day continues that tradition as the most successful day for for the bricks and mortar retailers, and we're seeing that sort of shift to to, to an online piece. And think about that research in terms of, sort of the timing of your, of your campaigns in terms of, you know, uh, with that research kicking off after lunch. Um, yeah, as, as you've just said, in terms of, sort of where people are predicting Amazon to, to grow, uh, you know, hit-wise we're seeing it at around 1.62% to .com, uh, .au. Um, so they've got to grow at least four times that size to reach eBay uh, within yeah, a Yeah, I, I think you've reported, you know, an 88% uplift in traffic for Amazon in the lead up to Christmas this year, which sounds like a lot, but considering um, where many people expected them to be, it's still um, you know, subpar in terms of expectations. Good growth, but you can see how far they've got to go to catch up. They're really going to need some multipliers happening. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the brands need to really make sure that they devise a strategy across the, the, the sales events, not just think about discounting, but really start to get into that mentality of the shopper and start to understand sort of you know what are they searching for, what are they visiting, and, and that, that shopping within um, that, that November period. So look at each of the days, look at sort of what's resonating with those uh, those particular customers, and you know adjust accordingly uh, yep. for each event. That hands the same one hundred percent. You can't ignore November or, or not take it seriously. I think most people are involved in November, but um, sort of doing ad hoc promotions, and I think it's really one that you've actually got to start planning for now as much as you'd be planning for your Christmas promotion, if not all. Yeah. And, and you know, partner with, with, with publishers, get the message out there. You know, really start to help help shoppers find um, those, those great deals that, that you've planned for, that you've built that strategy for. Um, because they don't just want deals, they want the best deals. Uh, yep. That's the that's the only way now. So we really want to get into to, to, to finding the best deals and, you know, talk about it with our friends uh, uh, as well. So. In terms of um, uh, our content, that's that, that's it for today. Um, I'll pass back to Helen, um, who may have a few questions, I'm sure. Yes, awesome. That was great. Thanks, Grant and Craig, for that presentation. It's really good to see how everything performed and unfolded over that last quarter, especially. Um, no doubt everyone found that as useful as I did, and um, thanks to everyone who did join. Um, you're right, we do have a couple of questions, so I'll throw them out there. Um, 
see if you guys know the answers and if not just say no and we can uh, look look at, into those and uh, get back to everyone but there are a couple of questions which I will um, I will read out um, the first one appears to be one for you I think Craig um, and it is if you're able to see if the top search products are driven by ad messaging from from retailers or if it's just driven by search um, so ad messaging across all channels not just search and I think that was relating to one of the slides we were looking at regarding Black Friday Boxing Day yeah so I think I think we can get down to quite quite a granular detail when we start to look at sort of the, the, the products that people are searching for and start to, to have that view. I think we've got we've got a unique ability to look at sort of the products that people are searching with insights uh, as well to help in terms of sort of understanding demand around um, the products that, that, that are resonating on each of those days. Uh, for, from a messaging perspective, I, I always love the fact that you, know, you can use that, that content of the way that people are searching to, to help in, in, in driving your, your, your messaging for, for your creative across uh, other channels as well. So you know, the way that people are searching around sort of, you know, uh, Black Friday, including that within your content, you know, looking at the, the review elements, making sure you've got content within that and promoting that uh, within your, uh, your, your different campaigns across uh, multiple channels, you know, uh, so that you really start to, to, to drive that um, that consistent uh, messaging across uh, all channels uh, at that piece. Great, awesome. Uh, I have another one here, and it, it is: Do you know the split of online sales that are picked up uh, via click and collect? It's a good question. It's, it's definitely growing. Um, I don't know yet, but um, you know, I don't have that on hand. But Grat, the uh, might handle that one. Yeah, you. I wouldn't have the data, but I know from look at least from a click frenzy perspective. Um, speaking with some of our customers that offer click and collect, they um, they use that as a tool to leverage and and, and basically acquire a lot more sales as, as a consequence. So um, click and collect has been fantastic for. Uh, the big bricks and mortar retailers, particularly those with the number of stores that they can leverage, and so they really do work hard to maximise that during uh, these sales periods as much as possible as well. And yeah, I think it has so many advantages in getting people in store. Um, that said, you know, a lot of room for improvement in, in click and collect in, in the in-store experience, particularly, um, and there's a lot of investment going into that area. But if you look at growth in other markets, I know in the UK, click and collect is a substantially Greater, I can't remember the exact um, ratio, but it accounts for a substantially greater proportion of total e-commerce sales than it does here. So we've got a lot of room to grow, but the investment is happening, and it'll get better and better. And, and you've got to nurture those those customers who are, who are using that that service as well. So you, the way that you sort of you, you know they're they're wanting that product, they they got to swing by, they got to pick it up. Like the experience as to how they come in store is, right. is, is crucial. Yeah. So back in the back room where next to the dressing rooms or something like that doesn't really cut it anymore. Customers expect a good experience and and, and it will be available quickly. Yeah, yeah, because their motivation is convenient. So I want to be able to get this and, and, and get out, but I want it to be a, a, a convenient, enjoyable um, uh, piece. So, and then how do you nurture them through your, through your marketing strategy uh, moving forward as, as to sort of, you know, knowing that as a preference for them is, well. is, is key. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, we are running a little bit out of time, but one quick question. I think it'll be a quick one for you, Grant. And it was um, relating to your report, how, you, how many people were um, interviewed in, in the survey. Well, so we... Uh, in the Amazon one, I believe it was it was over 1,600 um, consumer respondents, and I think it was over 100 retailer respondents as well. Okay, great, thank you. Well, thanks for that, guys. Um, we'll wrap it up there. Um, in front of you on the screen, there are two reports for everyone that's still online. Um, our re most recent report is our Marketing Insights Calendar. It's a really handy calendar, um, so be sure to go onto our new website to have a look at that and download that. And also the report that we have referred to in this webinar today, which is the Amazon Australia Year One Conjunction Power Retail, um, and um, have to take a look at that as well.
All right, thanks to both of you today. And just a gentle reminder to everyone that this webinar is recorded and we will be sending out the recording as well as the presentation slides. Um, thanks again and I hope you all enjoyed today's webinar.